doing this a slightly different way, but I think it should work. So, okay. We'll go ahead and call the Common Council meeting to order at 6.01 p.m. on Tuesday, September 27th, 2022. Let's stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Weagle. Here. Parga. Here. Middleton. Here. Crowder. Here. Romano. No, she's on the phone. Oh. Okay. Okay, uh, first up is the minutes from our last meeting on September 13th. Were there any changes or corrections? Okay, hearing none, can I have a motion to approve? Second. Okay, uh, uh, motion by Jennifer, seconded by Jenny. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jen, I'm not throwing uh, Further discussion? Okay, and I'll be taking a voice vote. Uh, I'll just start with Jennifer Romano. Jenny? Aye. Chad? Okay. Uh, Dan, you're abstaining. And Walt? Aye. Okay, we'll uh, consider those minutes passed. Next up is a rezone for A. Shively at 575 East Business 30. Nathan? Questions regarding the uh, rezone. Okay. Thank you, Nathan. Just hang out there for a moment. Uh, so up, up is uh, ordinance number 2022-27. Do you have a motion to read by title only? Summit. Motion by Jenny, seconded by Tad. For the discussion. All those in favor, I'll go by. I'm sorry, i got to go by voice vote. Jenny. Aye. Tad. Dan, All right. Walt, All right. Jennifer, it is unanimous. Please read ordinance number 2022-27 by title only. I'm sorry. No. Ordinance 2022-27, an ordinance amending the zoning classification of certain property from the R2 family residential district to the GB general business district. Again, this uh, ordinance is just uh, effectively approving what Nathan has discussed regarding HI Green Co. and that property. Any questions, comments, concerns regarding the ordinance? <coughs> okay. Hearing none, we'll go to, uh, do I have a motion? I'm sorry, do I have a motion to approve ordinance 2022-27 on first reading? Go ahead. Motion by Dan, seconded by Tad. For the discussion, go to the voice vote. Jenny? Aye. Tad? Aye. Dan? Aye. Walt? Aye. Jennifer? It passes unanimously. We'll move it to second reading at the next meeting. Next up is another rezone request for uh, the Bowen Center. Nathan?
question to Nathan. I do have a question, Nathan, and that is, because uh, I know I'll be asked, is are they planning to keep the pond that's at the front of the room? As far as I know, all of the rooms thinking is to keep the pond, yes, uh, for the rest of the property. So that would be the area. Uh, whether it would be reconfigured or anything, that would be determined. I've just heard of my that wouldn't surprise me, knowing that the uh, majority of the property was green space, effectively, and now it'll be built on. A significant amount more will be built on. So, yeah, smart. That pond that's on the old property. Yes. Feeds into that pond on the road. Hmm. Good information. So, if it's taken out. Gotcha. I have issues. Okay. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Gotcha. Okay. All feeds together. But I think there's still, you know, if I could take five way. acres away, I've got to put five acres someplace else. That that's up in the air as well. It's not being decided. If I take wetland and move the wetland, oh, yeah, there are some other on the road that end of that property. So, yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Nathan. So with that, uh, Ordinance 2022-28, do I have a motion to read by title only? Motion, motion by Tad, seconded by Jenny. Further discussion? All those in favor show, uh, let's see, I'm sorry, I did it again. Jenny. Aye. Tad. Dan. Aye. Walt. Aye. Jennifer. It is unanimous. Please read Ordinance 2022-28 by title only. Ordinance 2022-28, an ordinance amending, amending the zoning classification of certain property from the R1 single-family residential district to the GB general business district. Okay. And this, again, uh, is the ordinance that changes that rezone or changes that zoning classification. Questions, comments, concerns regarding the ordinance? Hearing none, can I have a motion to approve Ordinance 2022-28 on first reading? Second. Motion by Jennifer, seconded by Dan. We'll go to the voice vote. Jenny? Aye. Tad? Aye. Dan? Aye. Walt? Aye. Jennifer? It is unanimous. We'll move it to second reading at the next meeting. Thank you, Nathan. Any, while Nathan's here, anybody have any other questions for Nathan? Thanks, sir. Appreciate it. Okay. Department head reports. Mark. So we worked on the uh, Hill Drive Park landscaping for the Memorial Stone. I think it's going to be next Monday at noon. Uh, so it's nice to you guys have a great job with that. Um, so you can just stop by there and see that. Um, Questions of Mark? Hearing none. Thank you, Mark. Sean? So we did uh, check for the last of our overhead distribution customers from West Bay. <coughs> uh, that all varied now. Um, so the last one was transferred actually yesterday, so we're going to start uh, the overhead lines to put the guys that are going to be energized. So we're all pretty excited about that. Thank you. 
Question to Sean. Thank you. Kelly. Uh, back in, I think it was May, we approved a street repair uh, patching package for Niblock. Um, that was started yesterday. I came in town and started doing that repair work. Um, some of the streets are East Business 30, Chicago Street, Ohio, Earl Avenue. Plaza, Fronings, and Spark are areas that they're working on, and uh, they're putting the surface on today. They did the base work yesterday and, and patching, and then they're surfacing now. And it looks like they're probably going right up to the park. Um, I talked to Todd the foreman, and um, we thought they could get it done. Today. So that'll be that was based off of um, areas that when we came out of winter last year, coming into spring, we had several spots. That Continually some work done to it. So um, we'll have pavement solutions in town here in the next um, week or two, doing some pavement preservation work in town. That was, uh, again, they were approved back in the spring. Um, they've been busy and they're currently in Decatur and they'll be working the right way to start. Questions of Kelly? Thank you. Mike? All the bacteria. Uh, the day I came back from vacation, we just had clear water flowing through the facility. Uh, the reason I bring that up is just to let the I let the board know that uh, we will be having a violation on this month's report uh, for ammonia, uh, phosphorus. We just turned up our chemical to deal with that. And the reason we have the ammonia violation is we don't have, there was no bacteria to do any nitrification. So without that process there, the ammonia goes sky high. You can strip your ammonia with oxygen, but if we turn our air up, then it raises the phosphorus. So we're going to take a violation on one of them. Uh, but I'm happy to say as of tomorrow, we took two tanks out of service. Uh, that fifth tank will be back online tomorrow as we return. Our numbers uh, returned to normal today from our lab, the numbers that I got. So, hopefully, we're in the clear now. Uh, I also met with the uh, Midwest engineers for the CSO project, number 19 of the treatment plant. Um, as an electrical engineer, we went over uh, the electrical needs for the project, placement of lighting, and stuff like that. So, they're going to be putting together hopefully the final design in the next week or so. Let me sure this project has started. Uh, if you remember, it was approved by the board that they're going to do bumps, uh, a control panel, and a bypass. That started yesterday. Uh, the fourth main project I've got designed for 90%, and I also have the engineer's estimate. Uh, it's not an accurate figure because we're going to have to add new pumps to the Main Street Station, which I've got a meeting with a pump supplier, and also done a deal on October 4th to go over that part of the project. So. But I think it's still going to fall in with the, the number that I, uh, an estimate that I had before we started. So, then on uh, Thursday, myself and Mike Chota will be attending the Indiana Finance Authority meeting in Napanee. Uh, that's something we're required to do yearly, so we can apply for grants and funding and stuff like that. So, you still have to do that. So we'll wait out in the afternoon for that. Okay. Question to Mike. Thank you. Tom. As I've reported the last couple of meetings, um, 102, our older fire engine, has been having some issues. Um, Arms, the company, they're a certified um, fire apparatus mechanic company. Um, I've been here, they thought they had a fix three times. We take it up to Shriner Lake, do pump testing, and it would fail. Um, they, they just do 
come up with a code that says no interlock. Anyway, long story short, yesterday morning, Chris and we spoke with Arms. Instead of getting trip charges every time they come here and try something, um, Chris and I met here at the firehouse. He hopped in 110, I hopped in 102, and we took it to their shop um, so that they could get to the bottom of it and get away from the trip charge thing. So um, there is one of our fire trucks. If anybody says they see it in Ann, Ohio, it's there. <clears throat> um, we look, but the major mechanical things on the truck are, are good. Um, it could be as simple as a $2 breaker causing this. We just don't know. So they're going through the schematics with the company and trying to get to the bottom of it. So I'll just keep you posted as this happens. We are hosting um, a driver operator course. It's an NFPA certified class for driver operator. Well, actually, it's driver general now, or operator general now. They've separated driver operator pumper. Um, and some of our newer people that don't have it are going through it. Um, it's a good class to get to know all of the, the math that you use for when you pump, use an engine uh, for friction losses and things like that. Um, and to know what you're how the truck operates, the whole kit and caboodle. So um, we are doing that in-house, um, and things are going very well. I think there's two weeks left in that class. At the end of it, though, there is an EVOC portion that will go to the old high school parking lot, and, and they'll go through that as well. So um, if you see the, the fire truck over there going through cones, it's, that's what we're doing. Um, Just been a bit crazy, crazy summer, crazy year. Like I told the, the Board of Works earlier, it's been the busiest year that I've ever had with the fire department. And I, it's, I don't know if it's the environment we live on, live in now or what has changed. It's, it's crazy. Questions at Tom. Thank you, Chip. Westgate um, gave an update to the Board of Works that we offered a. Uh, change order for a two-week extension, and they have, will meet that all they've got left. I think in one area, I got two inches of surface to put on one street, and then uh, seed and topsoil the rest of the areas that they disturb. I've uh, been working, we're going after a grant for the test kitchen, so trying to get all the estimates in for that. Uh, we met with the potential developer today, and it's looking pretty promising, so Cross our fingers, get some new houses in the city. Nothing else. Question two. Thank you, Marsha, Rosie. A um, couple of things for your information. Um, you may remember. Uh, you may remember uh, the Veterans Memorial dedication is coming up on Monday. It'll be at noon uh, over at Patriotic Park. I want to. Give a shout out to the Parks Department, the Street Department, both have helped us with that project. Whether it was setting the stone, as well as uh, as well as um, the Parks Department is creating kind of a, a area for potential bricks in the future, as people want to purchase bricks in, in honor of their their veteran, if you will, whether peacetime veteran or wartime veteran. Um, and we can basically change out those bricks as they come in. So, uh, really appreciate that. Going to be a great event, I think, uh, on. On Monday at noon. Uh, so welcome. You're definitely welcome to attend. We'd love to have you if you're available. Uh, we have insurance information that's going to be coming here soon for uh, our city insurance plan. I think that's scheduled for next Thursday. Um, so so we'll continue to work on that. There's lots of legislative stuff that's starting to happen because we're getting close to legislative season uh, next, you know, beginning of next year. So everyone's kind of starting to get that conversation rolling on lots of different issues and potential issues coming up, things to that effect. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Again, as kind of, kind of to echo what Tom had said, obviously lots of projects happening right now, and uh, it's not going to slow down anytime in the near future, but that's good. That means we have progress happening. That means our, we're continuing to improve and grow our community. And, uh, and I'm just uh, happy to be a part of it. So, appreciate all that. Uh, Walt. Okay, Dan. Yes, uh, I apologize. Um, Halloween is scheduled for October 29th. 
That's a Saturday before Halloween, October 29th from 5 to 8 p.m. Um, the Little Pumpkins on Parade is actually on the Friday night before that from 4 to 7. Uh, I don't know. We did not approve it. We're waiting one, one, or one meeting, but basically it's going to be happening. We just need some clarification on some things. But the Chamber of Commerce does the Little Pumpkins on Parade type thing in you know, downtown, and so that is anticipated to happen on that Friday night before the 28th. Mother-son Halloween carnival thing is happening that night as well from, what, 6 to 9? Is that what you said? Okay, 6 to 9. So going to be a pretty packed weekend there for the treatment and stuff. So, yeah, good question. Jennifer? Hello? Are you on mute? There you are. Okay. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Chad? Jenny? Nothing. Uh, no press? Audience? Okay. We'll call the meeting adjourned. Thank you. By the way, the humor this evening was free.